Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning and AI Tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain how to install and run locally the newest computer vision model published by Apple. The name of this model is Sharp. And over here you can see a simple demonstration. So, what you can see over here is an image taken by my phone camera. This is the image of the corner of my kitchen. Namely, this is only a 2D image. This is not a 3D representation or a video. Once we provide this image to the model, the model is going to generate this PLY file, which is basically a point cloud reconstructing the 3D scene from this image. And you can see the representation over here. It's really, really amazing. It really looks good. And this is done only on the basis of a single image. And moreover, the advantage of this model is that it's super fast. It takes no more than several seconds on my local computer to generate this 3D scene. Note that I'm running this model on NVIDIA 3090 GPU, which has 24 gigabyte of VRAM. Okay, let's start. Here's the GitHub repository of this model. And let's briefly go over the main highlights of this model. As mentioned previously, Sharp is published by Apple. It is an approach to photorealistic view synthesis from a single image. As I mentioned previously, on the basis of a single photograph, Sharp regresses the parameters of a 3D Gaussian representation of the depicted scene. And this is done less in less than a second on a standard GPU by a single feed forward pass through a neural network. That is, we are just performing the inference. The 3D Gaussian representation produced by Shark can then be rendered in real time, yielding high resolution photorealistic images for a nearby view, which is really, really correct. Okay, so how to install this model? Here are the installation instructions. However, in order to apply these installation instructions, you will need to perform several, several intermediate steps, as well as several steps, which include installation of NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, installation of Git on your system, etc. And we are going to cover all these steps in this video tutorial. Okay, so let's start. The first thing that you will need is the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. However, before you install NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, you can double check if NVIDIA CUDA toolkit is installed on your system. You can simply click here, then search for command prompt, and in the command prompt, type this. If you see this type of reply, then NVIDIA CUDA toolkit is installed and you don't need to perform the following step. However, if you see the error, then you need to install the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. For that purpose, open Google and search NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. Click over here, click on download now. Then over here, select your operating system. Most likely you have 64-bit machine. Select Windows 11. You can select local installation or network installation, and then you will download this file, and then you will just run the file, and NVIDIA CUDA toolkit will be installed, as well as the NVCC uh, CUDA compiler, which is necessary to run PyTorch on your local computer. The next step is to install Git. To install Git, simply search for install Git on Windows, then click here, Git, select Windows, then over here you need to find a 64-bit version, here it is, download it, install it, add it to the system path, and that's it. To verify that this step is done correctly, you can over here simply type git in the command prompt and you should see this generic reply. This means that git is installed and you can proceed further. Okay, so the next step is to open a new terminal. Click here, search for system command prompt or command prompt. I'm going to resize it over here such that you can see what I'm typing. And then let's go to the base C drive or D drive, wherever you are, by typing this, and then let's create a new model or actually workspace folder. I'm going to call it as model sharp. Let's navigate to model sharp. And inside of this folder, we are going to clone the, the remote repository. Here's how I'm cloning. How did I get this web address? Well, I went here. I went here, I simply copied this address and I pasted it over here and that's it. So let's clone this. It's not going to take too long to clone this repository. And then let's navigate to the newly created folder. And here we are. Inside of this folder, we need to create a Python virtual environment. For that purpose, you need to have Python your, on your system. If you type Python, you should see this. You can type exit or simply 
exit with parentheses and you're out. If you don't have Python, you can easily install Python by simply Googling installing Python on Windows and in just a few clicks to install Python. The next step is to create a Python virtual environment. To do that, we simply need to do this. And after that, we need to activate the Python virtual environment. To activate the Python virtual environment, we type this and you can see that we are inside of the Python virtual environment. And then over here, we need to basically install the requirements. That is, we need to install all the libraries. You can simply press enter here and all the libraries will be installed. We are going to install a bunch of things. We are going to install PyTorch. We are going to install a number of uh, supporting libraries and it's not going to take too long to install. Note over here that since I already installed several times this model and erased it on my system, I'm actually using a cached version of libraries and consequently in my case it's going to be relatively fast to install the libraries. However, in your case you will have to download or the script will automatically download all the libraries. So be patient over here. Okay, so once all the uh, libraries are installed, we need to create an input and output uh, folder storing inputs and outputs or input and output images. I'm going to do it like this. And the next step is to copy the input images to the input folder. Over here, I took several images with my phone camera. You can do the same. Just take images of corner of your room or you can go outside or you can do something similar. And I'm going to copy them. Then I will go to my newly created folder. Here I am and I'm going to save all the files inside of the input folder. Okay, and we are almost ready to go. The next step, of course, is to run the render. We can run the render like this, sharp predict, then we need to dash E or I, dash I basically specify the uh, path where the input images are stored. In my case, it's in the input folder. And then you need to dash O, which specifies the output folder. And over here, you specify double dash render. This means that you want to render the images and press enter. And now you will see that the process starts. First time you run this model, it's going to download the uh, download the model weights. In my case, most likely the model weights are some cached somewhere on my system. This is because I'm running this model a number of times. So let's see over here what's happening. Uh, we can see basically performance over here and you can see the consumption of my CPU and GPU. Let's see if the, if the process is already started. It is. I can hear the fan of my GPU and you can see what's happening. This is relatively small model. I think it's no more than one or two gigabytes large. Okay, and you can see the process over here. You can see that memory consumption is still okay, not bad. And let's see what's happening. Now you can see that we are doing things. Here you can see images that are found and here it is. Okay, so here we need to be patient since it's going to take a while to generate everything. And you can see already that the first PLY file is being generated. Good. And after some time, you will see that you will have this PLY file. So how to open them? When you, well, you can use any software that can open PLY files. Uh, luckily, they also provide, or a per, one of the persons who basically contributed to the development or posted some comments in issues on the GitHub page, created a simple viewer for uh, the files. So here is the address. So you can simply select the file, go where the uh, generated files are stored. They're stored here. And then you go to the output, you open them up. Here they are. And then you can simply see a nice rendering of these images. And that's all for today. I hope that you like this video and see you in the next video tutorial.